What's up guys, CJ here, and welcome back to the second part of our 101 series on The Terminator. As always with these videos, our plan is to give you guys a crash course on a pop culture franchise, so that by the end of the series, you can hold your own in any discussion on the topic. But keep in mind, this is just a 101 course, so if you missed the intro video on Monday for The Terminator, you can check it out to see me lay down the basics of the franchise, and this time we're going to dig a bit deeper by talking about the different series of Terminators. We have to talk about Skynet first. Skynet's main complex is located in Cheyenne Mountain, Colorado at the SAC NORAD base located there. This is the world's most heavily fortified and well-defended mountain, even before Judgment Day when Skynet took over. The mountain is hollowed out, and the base is armored to the point that it can withstand a direct nuclear blast. At some point after it dropped bombs around the world, Skynet had the mountain destroyed to better show off its imposing superstructure. Skynet's core is still located miles beneath the surface of this building, and is supposedly a cold fusion reactor, and if the core of that reactor were to be taken out, it would completely cripple Skynet's operations. So to stop this from happening, Skynet defends itself using robotic creations known as the Hunter Killers. Skynet has a variety of these non-humanoid hunters, ranging from unmanned drones to tanks to giant unmanned airships, all patrolling the ruins of the Earth. But without a doubt, the most well-known of these hunters is the T-Series, aka the Terminators. The Terminators come in a wide range of designs for various purposes, starting with the T-1, or Battlefield Robot, which is a large robot with tank treads and two miniguns for arms. The T-7 is similar, but it's more armored and has four spider-like legs instead of treads, which is why it's called the Tetrapod. There's also a Moto Terminator that we saw in Terminator Salvation, which is a combination of a Terminator and a motorcycle, and of course its Alpine counterpart, referred to, not kidding, as the Snowminator. From this point on, the models became more humanoid, starting with the T-70, which is kind of a basic foot soldier, but it's clunkier and stiffer than the later models, and it also has a chain gun for a right arm. We then jump all the way up to the T-400, which has freer moving joints and two hands, but also is much boxier, and fun fact, chronologically that was created this year by Skynet. The T-500s look more humanoid than the 400s, and have a specialized battle chassis to make them more durable. From here though, Skynet seemed to change their tactics, and we get to the main attraction, the Infiltrators, which are designed to look like humans to break the Resistance's ranks and destroy them from inside. The first make of these were actually the T-600s, whose main issue was that they had rubber skin, so picking them out on the battlefield was actually pretty easy for the Resistance. After this, Skynet returned to the drawing board and created the T-700s, which we know very little about outside of this being the first time that Skynet used organically grown skin, and they're supposedly easier to take down with conventional weapons than their sequel series. And that sequel series is the main attraction, the version that people view as THE Terminator, the T-800. This is the series that Skynet sent back to kill Sarah Connor in 1984, and would later be sent back by John Connor himself to protect him in the past and prevent Judgment Day in Terminator 2 in 1994. The T-800s are powered by two nuclear power cells that allow it to run for 120 years, although later models like the T-850 swapped this out for hydrogen fuel cells. Also, after the T-800 sacrificed itself in Terminator 2 to prevent any trace of Skynet from existing in the past, Skynet actually began to construct later models with hardened super-alloy endoskeletons that included coltan to prevent that from happening again. After this, we got the T-900, the most notable of which is Cameron from the Sarah Connor Chronicles. These models use coltan super alloys and are much more adept at mimicking human behaviors, even believing to a degree that they are human. The T-950s began to include onboard weaponry, so the Terminators didn't have to find or be given a weapon, and this actually led to the creation of the T-X, the Terminator that appeared in Terminator 3. They have the onboard weaponry and mimetic polyalloy of another model we'll discuss in a moment, while still having a traditional endoskeleton. Next up, we have the T-1000, the originator of the mimetic polyalloy, aka the liquid metal, which we see in Robert Patrick's Terminator in Terminator 2. Its entire body is made of this, and because of that, it can morph itself, either creating simple weapons like blades, or even becoming different people. This also makes it very difficult to destroy without substances like liquid nitrogen, which you can use to freeze it and shatter it, or some kind of corrosive acid. The next make is where things get to get a, a bit controversial. The T-3000 is essentially a human who was infected by a series of nano devices that changed them on a fundamental level into a machine. There's only one person that's known to have survived this process, and watch Terminator Genesis if you want to figure out who that was. The T-3000 is incredibly strong. It's able to lift a T-800 one-handed and toss it away, and it's fast enough to seemingly phase through attacks and hit eight times a second. The T-5000 is the model that infects the humans to turn them into the T-3000. Not only can Skynet transfer itself into a T-5000 to escape destruction, but a 5000 is so good an infiltrator that not even outside forces like animals can sense that they're not human. 
But the final Terminator we'll talk about is the T1 million, or the T Meg. These are giant Terminators made out of liquid metal whose default shape is a giant spider scorpion like thing, and they actually serve a very special purpose guarding Skynet's core, and they do so by morphing into the surrounding area to surprise anyone who happens to make it through. And that's your crash course on what the humans are up against. Join Tim back here on Friday for the final part of this course, but that's gonna do it for me here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like if you like what you saw, subscribe for more great content every single day, and consider turning on your notifications to be alerted every time we upload a new video. Signing off, this is CJ, and I'll see you next time.